Thank you. Lovely, thanks very much, and happy St Andrew's Day to you. <laughs> Um, this is uh, the, the project uh, between uh, DIT, uh, IT, TALA and uh, ITB. So um, I suppose one of the challenges we're, uh, we are facing is how we encourage academic staff to engage with the National Professional Development Framework. <laughs> and we feel that our, our project proposal uh, will uh, achieve this. There's a lot of challenges, as we're aware, facing higher education and in particular engineering departments. Um, there's a whole collapse of apprenticeships, they're coping with uh, uh, sudden downscaling, uh, this whole internationalisation piece, and there's also a requirement for uh, new CPD regulations that's coming forward from Engineers Ireland. So there's a lot of challenges. Our project is seeking to facilitate uh, dialogue around and about various professional development processes that are aligned with the national uh, professional development framework. And these are, are the objectives of which uh, we are, we're supposed to be, uh, or we're going to, we plan to uh, undertake as part of the, the project rollout. It's building on existing work that is ongoing in the DIT and has been funded through uh, the National Forum in the past. There's uh, various models around about process and product, around about e-portfolio. We also have very strong links with uh, Engineers Ireland already, and uh, Kevin <laughs> can support that. Uh, and we're already implementing a future professionals programme uh, with Engineers Ireland, and they're looking for a pedagogical skills module to be developed. We have links into our own student engagement strategy, and we also have a variety of CPDs uh, round about DIT leadership and the implementation, the skills and competences round and about it, and very strong networking links already through uh, uh, the National Forum and other, other ways. Now, you've seen the, the key tasks and the project deadlines that we have uh, circulated previously. just want to, to focus particularly on... Uh, Rather than the outputs, we're focusing on uh, the kind of dialogue and the activities that are around the, the whole process. Rather than coming out with specific tools at the end of it, uh, we're looking for facilitating a um, whole kind of dialogue round and about the various processes involved in professional development. And that's going to be requiring a variety of engagement with uh, key stakeholder groups using a variety of <coughs> research methods uh, as part of that. So we, we are seeking to engage with uh, uh, academics, uh, students, uh, engineers Ireland, alumni who have recently completed programmes, etc., as you can see. But it's also about embedding and integrating this within, uh, as a strategy and within policies within our institutions, because we feel it's timely and appropriate to, to be doing this. So just to pull out a, a couple of the project outcomes which uh, will get us to there, uh, the strength, I think, in our particular uh, project proposal is this evidence-based reflective process to structure and inform the reflective dialogue around and about the processes where academic leaders will be working uh, with our academic staff to align various strategies to help implement and meet the changing needs of uh, the staff and uh, the needs of their schools. So we are going to be working with them to develop an institutional strategy which uh, would be recognised in kind of the, 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 the way that Athena Swan is, is recognised. So uh, stages of development would be uh, appropriately acknowledged. And we really want to integrate uh, the whole kind of value process round and about how the framework through the National Forum can be implemented and uh, can value this activity. In terms of impact and sustainability, uh, there's a variety of ways in which we see this happening, and dissemination is obviously core as part of the dialogue. <laughs> it links into a variety of uh, 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 stakeholder groups who are already working with uh, through uh, various projects that have been involved in over the years, particularly links with Sparks <laughs> in Scotland is, is one, and various other networks. Um, also, I suppose we're looking at the effects ultimately on learning. Uh, what does that actually mean in terms of the uh, student achievement? And we'll be looking at the development of graduate attributes in particular and issues around about uh, student engagement and retention. Because I think engineering is always uh, um, ha has issues around and about that. So how can we change managed processes round about it through professional development? 
I think ultimately we'd like to see change pedagogies, and this is about reviewing and rethinking uh, the uh, processes round right about informed dialogue, critically reflective dialogue, and templates that would help support that. And ultimately it's about changing institutional culture in response to changing needs, which are uh, as part of an evolving process. So that's also about changing our organisational attitudes. Uh, alignment with current strategies, and I think you're probably aware of, of most of these, um, from Engineers Ireland right the way through to the, the National Digital Roadmap. Um, uh, I suppose most particularly recently the whole uh, HEA engaging student engagement decision making report I think is kind of instrumental in informing the principles that will underpin our work. Uh, you'd also be aware that uh, Engineers Ireland have, have put in the requirement from next January, so I suppose this makes uh, the project very timely that all members of Engineers Ireland, uh, in line with best international practice, have to undertake five days or 35 hours per annum uh, round and about CPD. So they've gone through a fairly extensive uh, process already to uh, recognise and acknowledge the different uh, CPD requirements. And these are very much uh, aligned with the, the factors that are, are uh, in, in obsolescence for engineers at present, just to quote that, so <coughs> note it down there. Um, so I suppose it's the idea of the skills that we want for academics anyway, the idea that we should be reflecting and continuously upskilling and to be able to uh, support ourselves and our students to uh, you know, source new material, etc., and looking at new approaches that would uh, help to do this. Uh, if we link in uh, between the actual national development uh, framework and the CPD uh, framework that's been developed through engineers, I suppose one uh, looks at the kind of uh, dual identity of uh, the engineer who sees himself as the engineer um, uh, as, as a profession and also the engineer as an academic. And I suppose sometimes these can be in conflict. I think uh, also uh, recognises that we have different learning needs at different stages of our careers, whether you're just a recent graduate coming out right the way through to whether you're leading a particular programme, and we'll be seeking to acknowledge all these various stages. Um, in terms of academic leadership, because we have in, in place uh, an academic leadership programme already in DIT and plans to roll this out, uh, we're looking at the dialogue and reflection round about this in particular. And probably linking into PMDS, but some of the strategies that we would be engaging in this dialogue is, is about sort of kind of taking stock and identifying areas for development, facilitating the, the dialogue round about digital capacity building, etc. The whole piece where you're actually thinking and negotiating a learning agreement that is appropriate to your particular individual needs and that uh, that is required strategically within the school. How can you document, how can you evidence this, where are the gaps in there and how can we best address them? But also, you know, at the end of the day, uh, having these informed discussions, so we can do nothing else uh, through the project, uh, we want to be uh, having informed discussions and having structured, meaningful dialogue <coughs> round and about that. And we seek to uh, develop a template round and about that. And of course, uh, evaluation and review is very much integral within all of the, the project proposal. If we're looking again at different uh, ways in which we might map and, and the national uh, uh, framework, um, we're looking at the different uh, typologies of professional development activities and again in line with those that are there with Engineers Ireland. Uh, but I don't think there's any great difference. These are ones that would be uh, recognised uh, more universally, so there is a, a broader applicability <coughs> to this. Uh, we're also recognising that there's different types of learning and again left hand side the whole kind of area of whether you're new learning as part of a, as a graduate or in the right hand side how they have uh, identified the learning domains of say a graduate, man manager, mentor, strategist and leader and we would see our piece as being the bit in the middle that's aligning the two. Also, as, a, as I mentioned, the key element is the structured, informed, reflective dialogue. And again, this is acknowledged in Engineers Ireland guide on the right-hand side, that reflective and planning process is integrated within that. And we feel it's very much reflected in the professional development module on the left. So that is going to be core within the process and the templates that we develop. 
Uh, just final slide is it, uh, just to acknowledge the, and we are very grateful for the uh, feedback from the international panel. Uh, we just wanted to acknowledge that uh, the, there was recognition that there were similarities between our proposal and the one that you're about to hear about after this particular presentation. And we did have some discussions, and I'm sure Karina and her team will also talk about this over the last uh, uh, week or so, around and about possible uh, collaborations. And we do see areas where there's possibilities for exchange. But we do feel that we would like to continue as, as separate uh, projects, if, if, if at all possible. Um, the other issue that was raised was about the clarity of student engagement and involvement, and we apologise that this didn't actually come through the, the project proposal itself. I suppose it's maybe a, 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 a implicit within the, the programme and is, is taken for granted, but we very much see students as key stakeholders, and these are at different stages of their academic journey. Uh, we've always taken into account the student voice, and that would be very much linking into what's actually happening nationally, but it's also as key stakeholders in terms of decision-making processes uh, throughout, um, because uh, um, we recognise that the, the value of this. And all the, the strategy development as well, is because, again, a strength I'd see is, uh, within the project is that kind of strategic embedding. We do want to review what policies are in place and what is actually happening at a learning, teaching and assessment strategic view uh, across the three institutions. And obviously, uh, students are very much involved in that. So that's the end of uh, the presentation, and uh, we're happy to take questions. I might just introduce the, the, uh, my colleagues as part of the team. Uh, Kevin Gawkin, who is from uh, the College of Engineering, Margaret Keane from TALA, and uh, Daniel McSweeney, who is from Blagerstown, and hopefully they will be able to field the questions alongside myself. So thanks very much. <laughs>